sec. And we're going to do some examples today with uh, basically edge and screw dislocations. So let's go ahead and do a quick uh, little example. So let's go ahead and draw our burger circuit for our first edge dislocation. So I know this is an edge dislocation. Why is that? Because I can see this extra half plane of atoms here. So what's the first thing I have to do in my burger circuit? Well, I need to define my T vector. Oops, and that's a little weird here. So I'm going to define my T going out of the board. So it's coming right out of the page, right at you. So this is my T vector. So once I have my T vector, I am going to be looking and trying to figure out, I need to draw a right hand circuit. So I need to do my right hand rule and draw a circuit kind of in this direction around. So we're going to draw right handed circuits, you know, with my thumb pointed in this T direction. So when my thumb's pointed there, I need to make sure that the circuit is going to go, if I'm focused on this plane, which I am here, I need to make sure my circuit goes around clockwise here. So that's kind of a lot of ink already on this page. Back out here, and then let's go ahead and do one more time. So this is my T vector. So I'm going to do my T is coming out of the board here. So I'm going to pick my start. Just, I'm going to do it right here. Now one of the key things when you pick your burger circuit, I need to make sure that I pick a large enough circuit where I enclose my dislocation. So I know I need to basically enclose this extra half plane. So I'm going to pick my start point right here. So this is my start. So remember, I'm doing start to finish, right hand circuit. So I pick T, I pick my start. I need to draw the circuit, so I'm going to go up, up one. So from here is my start. I'm going to go up one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Same number of spaces. One, two, three, four. And one, two, three. Ah, this is my, I did my right hand circuit. Right hand circuit. Or I'm going to do my finish. Finish. So I need to define my start to finish vector. So start to finish. This, this vector here, this is my burgers vector. This guy. So my start to finish. So we can see, again, we didn't end up, you know, we have a dislocation here. Why? Because my circuit's not closed. My start and finish didn't end up at the same point. So that's one of the key things that tells you there's a dislocation. And I also know that my Burgers vector is perpendicular, not to use my dislocation, but is perpendicular to T. So thus, I have an edge dislocation just like I imagined. You can kind of see this a little bit nicer in the following kind of diagram. So actually, back out again. So this is my selection of my tangent vector out of the board. This is my start. Go up here. Again, I'm counting spaces and jumps. One, two, three, four. Next. One, two, three, four. Next. One, two, three, four. Next, one, two, three, four. My start to finish, that's my Burgers vector. Excellent. So, and you can see a little bit nastily drawn uh, here as well uh, for some figure. What about a screw dislocation? So again, I know that the screw dislocation, this kind of inclination is gonna be in this plane that I wanna be working with. So, I'm gonna simply pick that my tangent vector is kind of going up. Up, up, you know, from this plane. So one of the key, key tips to work with for a screw dislocation is put your start right here, right at the edge there. So that's going to be my start. And again, if I'm doing a right hand, right hand circuit, I'm going to have to go this way. So I want to just draw the whole thing. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. So that's my start. I'm going to one, two, three, four. Five, six. So remember, I went one, two, three, four. Then I went one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. So it's kind of one, two, three, 
four, five, six. And then, so I went, my starting point here, this was my start. That was my start. I went one, two, three, four. So now I just need to go from here. I need to go one, two. So this is my finish. So now I need to go from start to finish. That is my burgers vector. So you can see my burgers vector here is going up from again my start to my finish. So here my burgers vector is parallel to my tangent vector. So what type of true dislocation or what type of defect is that? I always mess that one up. This is a right hand screw. And again, here, discard that. And you can kind of see that same process here. What about here? Again, I could kind of see the same idea. So I'm going to put my tangent vector coming out of the board here. So that means I need to go this way in terms of my circuit. So I'm going to start again right at the edge here. So I'm going to go start here. One, two, three, four. So I'm going to go here. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then, so one, two, three, four. I need to go one, two. So this is my start to finish. That's my burgers vector. So my burgers vector is going in this direction. So here, my burgers vector and T are anti-parallel. So this is a left screw. And again, we can see that right there. So that's it. These uh, screw and edge defects. That's all that we're going to be kind of working with here. So now you're an expert on screw and edge dislocations. But you might be asking yourself, aside from the fun uh, kind of geometry that we're doing here, why are we doing this kind of procedure? Well, dislocations are a really key um, material property that is going to give you some, uh, it's going to basically really affect your mechanical properties. And one of the kind of material properties that we're going to come across is this dislocation density rho as units of inverse meter squared. So if we have a highly cold work material, again, something that you know we roll and we've kind of talked about before, you might have, so if we have cold work material, that dislocation density could be as large as 10 to the 12 centimeters uh, squared. But if we have an annealed material, put it in the furnace for a long time, let those, di let those dislocations diffuse out, your dislocation density can be 10 to the uh, 5 centimeters, inverse centimeters squared. And again, dislocations, they can move via slip and climb. So next time, we're just going to take a quick look at grain boundaries and 2D defects and maybe some 3D defects as well. But now you're all experts in edge and screw dislocations. Congratulations. I'll see you next time. Thanks.